Today we're going to make a recipe with a tradition flour. So it's a flour without additives and a very good quality flour. You can find it at your bakery or perhaps in a store. You will also find the recipe in the description, so it's up to you to calculate according to your needs. So to start, we're going to autolyze for one hour, so mix the flour and water for five minutes in the first speed. At the end of kneading, scrub the bowl well so there is no waste in the bowl. Then you will see that the dough is barely kneaded, brittle, not very pretty and the gluten network is not done at all. After an hour, touch your dough, it now has good extensibility. You can stretch the gluten network and almost see through it. And after one hour, the dough and its natural ferments have already worked quite well. You will then start kneading for 7 minutes in first speed with sourdough and yeast, then 4 minutes in second with a salt. Once kneading is finished, you can do a visual check. Your dough is well kneaded when it takes off well from the walls of the bowl and when the dough is very smooth. Then take it out, place it in a container and let it rest for one hour at room temperature. After an hour, you will come and give it a turn. To do this, you stretch the dough well and fold it back on itself, you can do it like me, or on each side of the dough. How to know if the fold is well made? By touching the dough. The dough has taken a lot of strength, and when you pull it a little bit, it comes back in place. Then leave it to rest in the fridge for 24 hours at 4 degrees. Next day, take out your dough of the fridge, divide the baguette to about 300 grams and preform the dough. To do this, fold the dough on on itself, then a second time, simply roll up without forcing too much and without decasting too much. The goal here is really to give a basic shape to make shaping easier. Let it rest for about 45 minutes to 1 hour at room temperature. For shaping, use a little flour because it's a little bit sticky though. And then take a piece of dough, turn it over, fold the dough on itself for the first time, then fold the second side over the first, overlap it, and with the thumb and the hand, wrap around the tub and with the apple of your other hand, close the dough to, to make a weld. Then extend the dough with your two hands to form a baguette without forcing, without degassing too much, and then you have your first baguette. For the second one, same. We fold the first time, then a second time, and we roll up with the right or left hand roll up on the thumb and with the other hand make a weld and then shape it to make a baguette. 
board baguette with pointed edges. It's the same principle except that when you shape the door you will press more firmly to form points at the end. When your baguettes are shaped, put them on a layer or cloth and fold it between each baguette so they do not stick together. Then cover the baguette with the same fabric or something else and rest one hour at room temperature. After an hour, prepare the oven, take the baguette by hand or with the breadboard, put them on your oven rack flour and bake at 250 degrees for about 20 minutes. In my case, I put them on a board and then in the oven directly. Flouring the baguette is not an obligation, but it gives a prettier side. Don't forget also to score the baguette. I made three cuts for the pointed ones and one cut for the normal one. To score pretty well, tilt your blade at 45 degrees and give a short stroke. Then, if you bake in a normal oven, put steam with an ice cube or water in the drip pan and close the door immediately. That's all for the tradition baguette, it's not very complicated. There's a few technical gesture and process to know. So now I cut the baguette in half and look at how amazing it is inside. I hope you liked the video, don't hesitate to subscribe, leave a comment or like, it's a very big support for me. Have a good day, bon appétit and see you next time.